very controversial long simmering question in the Bitcoin world, whether this currency called Tether that's pegged to the dollar uh, is somehow being used to artificially inflate the price of Bitcoin. First, before we get into sort of some of your skepticism about the paper, some of the questions you raised about, what is the central allegation here? All right, uh, there is a coin called Tether. It is the most successful stable coin. Right. Uh, most people are familiar with Bitcoin. Tether is completely different. Tether tries to keep its value equal to exactly one US dollar. They actually have a Euro Tether coin as well. They're gonna have a yen, but it's the dollar when people concentrate on. Um, and they do that by, for every Tether they create, there's a dollar in a bank account. Uh, there's been a lot of skepticism in the crypto community about whether that's actually true. There's been a lot of skepticism in the traditional financial community as well. Uh, Tether has been controversial since 2014 when it was introduced. And one of the main allegations has always been that it's being used to manipulate Bitcoin prices. Right, in theory, if they didn't have the one-to-one -one backing, they could print up Tethers and use them to buy Bitcoin, something like that. People have argued that this is happening for a while. This new paper, how did they approach the question? What did they bring to the debate? Well, there's been a lot of uh, work on this, and frankly, most of it has exonerated Tether. The basic thing that most people have discovered is that, yeah, there's a lot of smoke here, but no fire. But they've used aggregated data. Uh, this is the first paper I would call a professional academic look at the project. Uh, it's very, very difficult to work with this data. And frankly, there's a lot of guesswork involved. There's some very sophisticated financial analysis. So this is kind of the gold standard look. And they did indeed find manipulation to the normal standards of academic significance. But my personal opinion is it's probably more noise than signal. Um, it just, there's so much complexity, so much noise in the data, so much uh, uh, complexity in these analyses, and the amount they found was tiny. They found that a million dollars of manipulation raised the price of Bitcoin mm. $4. Yeah. And even if that's true, I mean, who cares? Well, when you say that most of the analysis heretofore has been aggregate data versus sort of rigorous statistical methodology, first define that, what is sort of aggregated data? Okay, well, we know the total issuance of Tether. We know the price of Bitcoin. Uh, we know total Bitcoin transactions, or at least we can have some idea about that. But to really understand what's going on in the crypto market, you have to trace flows from exchange to uh. exchange. Uh, there's no uh, way you can do that directly from published data, you have to guess based on how flows move and when. And when I say guess, I mean people write sophisticated statistical algorithms to do this guessing for them, but you still don't really know for sure. And it, it just adds some noise and uncertainty to the data. It, it, it's odd because every single crypto transaction is public and available and you can see it, right. but you can't match them up almost by design. I mean, that's kind of the point of crypto. So what is some of the data that they looked at in terms of periods where Bitcoin had unusual price rises and where they could identify something in the creation of new tethers that sort of went beyond the traditional. Okay, analysis. well again, most people have looked at issuance of Tether. Right. Uh, they went a step farther. They uh, looked at the Tether moving from Bitfinance, which is the exchange controlled by the people who control Tether, to other exchanges. And they were able to do that by looking at wallets and addresses. I don't want to get too technical here, but you can kind of guess from that where the tether is flowing. They said when there are big tether flows and there are big Bitcoin flows, uh, they picked the 87 periods with the biggest flows, and they said on average Bitcoin goes up 1.2% in the next hour. So they looked at the 87 periods of the biggest tether flows. Tether and Bitcoin oh, flows, right. combined, right. and they found, and. You said 1.4%? 1.2% per hour in the next uh, hour. Now, if you add all those together, that comes up to about a 250% increase in price. But the silly thing about that is that assumes the manipulation is permanent. That assumes the entire 1.2% ah. was due to Tether and that it never went back down when they sold the Bitcoin or, or, or when things went down. And did most of these, was this over 2017? Uh, it was, yes, March 2017 to March 20, 2018. And of course we know that at least for the last n several months of 2017, it was just an insane several months for the price rise of Bitcoin. <laughs> it was an exciting, yes. <laughs> exciting, another te highly technical way to characterize it, which 1.2% uh, 
It's not even that. In, in an hour, protection. yes, yes, that's just not for, for Bitcoin. If it was S&P 500, 1.2%, something we get excited about, a big hour. Uh, Bitcoin, it's an ordinary hour. Now, finally, if you were to continue this line of research, you want to continue to look at uh, manipulation, did the paper give you any ideas of sort of what the next questions you would be or the next tests you would run? Actually, the most convincing part of the paper didn't really make most of the news reports. They did point out that when Bitcoin hits $500 round figures, there mm. seems to be some funny stuff going on. That was much more convincing statistically. So that says to me somebody's doing kind of some technical analysis, trying to set up some resistance levels. Um, that's a little bit different from kind of gross manipulation where you're just pushing the price right. up. So that means maybe they didn't push Bitcoin up to $20,000, but maybe they held it at 17500 for five minutes longer mm. than it should have been.